we're going to start with lesson one so in lesson one we're going to learn how to start microsoft word identify the elements of microsoft word screen create a new document and also learn how to save that new document so if you're using windows xp you're going to click uh, start and then you go to microsoft office and then you go to microsoft office word 203 so when you click that office 203 it's going to open this window and this is the window that is going to show you that you have pressed the right command so the next thing you're going to learn is the uses of microsoft word so they are listed there so number one is the preparation editing and printing of official letters also you can write the friend letters using uh, the word document writing memorandums okay writing cv and uh, resumes writing project reports this is and dissertations so writing proposals team papers etc so they are listed there so below here we have the elements of microsoft word screen so we have the title bar the topmost this one called the title bar it is the title of the document in our case we have document 2 so below it we have the menu bar and then you have the standard toolbar that is under it and then you have the formatting toolbar and then here we have the vertical scroll bar and then we have the horizontal ruler and then we have the text area where you're going to compose your text and then you have the vertical ruler you have the drawing toolbar here you have the status line so those are the elements of microsoft word screen so guys if you want to compose your text you're going to start it where, where you have the blinking eye and i'm going to write uh, functions of search engine okay so i have text now i can save my work okay so if you want to save your work we have two options so you come to file and then you come here you see save and save us so the difference between the two is save is used to save an existing document okay and save us is used to save the document for the first time so in our case we are saving the document for the first time so if we save it and we come back later and make some changes and then we want to save it we won't save us we just come and say save so it will save the changes i hope you have understood but in our case now you're going to click save us and then to prompt you with this window where you're just going to give your um, work the name so that when you come later you can remember the name that you saved it with and then retrieve your work so for making it easier okay, it's good if you save your work with the names that are in relationship to the work so in my case i just save it as function of search engines so i can choose where i want to save my work i can save it on the desktop my documents anywhere you want to save you can save but in my case i'm going to save it in my documents and then i'm just going to click save so if you save your work you will see the title bar will change from the document to function of search engine so the name that i have used to save my work so if i close the work and I want to access it later. I'm just going to come to that, open uh, Microsoft Word, and then I will come back to File, and then I will come to Open. But if you realize down here, you can just click here, and it is going to open. But I just want to use that other way. So sorry, guys. So I just come to File, and then Open. And then come and type the name that i had saved it with or you can just scroll here okay but a lot of work but it's here but uh, if you remember the name you can just type in the name here and then click open and it's going to open my new work here so i hope you have understood so to clarify more about save if i come and say something else here down uh, maybe i like engines 
okay so i've made some changes to our work okay so i need to save so i just come here file and click save to save the changes i have made so you can see here you have the shortcut you can click ctrl s or you can come here and click this save here okay if you do that it's going to meet the same purpose of saving and when you do that you may close your work welcome in lesson two my name is peter and i'm going to be taking you through this lesson so in this lesson you're supposed to learn how to select and apply formats use drop capitals within documents enhance the appearance of a document use the find and uh, find and replace feature and apply text within a document so i have some uh, text i've composed i'm going to show you how to select or highlight text so formatting is making your document to be attractive if you want to make any enhancement to your document the first thing you need to do is to select you can select one letter and you can select one word you can select one line and you can select the whole the whole document okay but before we do that i'm going to show you how to select and if you want to select you have to press the left mouse button and then you drag it either on your left or either downwards okay or if you want to unselect you press that same button left and then you go up okay so if i want to enhance this uh, function of search engines i have to select it and if i want to make it italic i'll just press there okay you see down here we have other text that I have not selected so if i make any enhancement they won't be affected why because they are not selected another way you can select is to make the use of shift shift key on your keyboard and then you press the arrow button for downwards okay and when you press without uh, without uh, releasing the shift key you go all the way to the point where you want okay if you want to select one word maybe this search you press shift and then you use the arrow key for the right hand side and then you just press it one once once as in you press the shift key without erasing it and then you press the arrow key that points to the right okay so if you want to reach until there you release both of them okay i hope you have understood if you want to use the mouse uh, you have to press the left mouse button once without erasing and then you drag the mouse slowly to your right okay i want to show you how to bold so there are three ways in which you can bold your text so you have to select this so the first way is to press the b on the formatting toolbar okay if you want to unbold it you just have to press the same okay the other way is to come to format in the menu bar and then you press font okay so you press format and then font when you click it it's going to prompt you with this window and then you are going to select bold here in font style bold okay and then you say okay the other way is to press ctrl b on your keyboard ctrl and then you press b to once and then ctrl again and then b to unbold it i hope you have understood how to bold your text if you want to utilize your text you have to select and then you press this eye that has slanted you press it once and then you press it again and if you want to know another way you have to come to format and then you come to font and then on the font style you choose italic and then you click ok you see the effectiveness i want uh, to use another way i can just come to the keyboard and press ctrl you press ctrl and then you press i okay press ctrl i to reverse okay 
if I want to underline, I'll have to select. So the first way is to click this underline. But as you will notice, it will be underlined, but it has only a single underline and it is black in color. Okay. The other way is to press Ctrl U. But at times you may be told to add another color and to maybe to enhance the appearance of the line okay if you want to achieve that you have to select and then you come to format then you come to font and then here underline style you come and choose the one maybe i've been instructed to put i'm just going to go with this and then here is the color underline color you have to come and choose maybe red or the color which will be told you just choose it i'm just going to take blue and then you say okay now you see it has this type of uh, underline and it is blue in color. If you choose uh, Control U or you choose this, it is going to come with default black and a straight line. If you want to enhance it, you have to come to Format, Font, and then you choose from here. Underline, Style, and then you choose the underline color and then you say OK. OK? But the most important thing you have to select before you do that. I'm just going to remove it. Hope you have understood how to board, how to utilize, and how to underline. If you want to change your font type, you have to select the document and then you come here. So you have the Times New Roman. This is the current font type. So if I want to change it, I have to press this drop down button. And when you click it, you have to come and select. So if you can notice, Every font type has its own name. I'll just choose uh, maybe this one, British Script MT. And when you choose it, you see our font has changed. The first thing is to select the text. Even if I want to reach here, it's going to take effectiveness until to where we have the comma. So I'm just going to choose another font type. So we have main, so we just come and choose. So you see, it has changed to these curls MT. If you want to return it to Times New Roman, you select the document and then come here. You may type the name if you know it, Times New Roman. Okay, or you just press the drop down button and you search for the name that you are looking for. Or if you are looking for Times New Roman, you just press that. Okay. Another way to change the font type is to come to Format and then you go to Font and then here, here you have the font. This is where you will find the other font types. So you just have to choose, and you see down here, the the font has changed to Arlington. Okay. If you choose this one, it's going to change. If you choose this one, it's going to change to that. If that's what you want, you just have to come and say, okay, our font has changed from Times New Roman to High Tower Text. So you are going to learn how to change the font size of the document. If you want to change the font size of the document, you have to select the document or the work that you want to increase the size or to reduce the size of the text. And then you come here and uh, choose the font size that you want. So it goes all the way to 72. But that does not mean that you cannot put maybe 73. 73. Okay. So now our document is font size 73. But as we realize, it's going to increase the number of pages, which will be 17 pages. You can see down here in the status line. I just want to use font 12. So you can type it directly or you can choose from the selection that you have here. So if you want uh, maybe to put uh, 13.5, since it's not in the selection, you can just type it in on your keyboard, 13, and then you point 5, and then you press the return key or the enter key on your keyboard. And it's going to change from the font size that you had previous to the new font size that is 13.5 another way to to change your font size is to come to format and then go to font and then go to the size here and then you can type your font size there or you can select it from here i'm just going to select and say font size 12 and then say okay so the next thing you're going to learn is how to change the font uh, the font color so 
I'm just going to select that and then I will just come here where you have the A you can come and select the font color to be pink okay another in the other paragraph the font uh, color to be blue okay so that's how you do it so th that's one way another way is to come to so, so it's black another way is to come to format font and then you go to font color here and then choose the color that you wish or that you have been instructed to put and you press okay so if you want to turn it to normal you select and then you can press automatic automatic is black next thing we are going to learn you're going to learn how to put a drop capital so a drop capital is the letter that has a bigger font than the rest of the document so how you do it is you select one letter so for example s in, in our case and then you come to format and then you come to drop capital yeah drop cap and then you choose drops okay and then you say okay so you see i know you have noticed in the newspaper they always have something like this so you have another one that is called in the margin so you select it it's called a hanging drop cup so you come and say drop cup and then in the margin and then you say okay so you see this one is inside the paragraph this is outside the paragraph so this is the normal drop cup this is a hanging drop cup okay so uh, i'm just going to turn it to the way it was the other thing i want us to learn is how to put a strike through double strike through and uh, emboss and other things so you can select uh, one word well okay i'm just going to use this word engines in our case come to format and then come to font and you can see here effects so I just want you us to view the changes from down here to save us some time. So if I put strike through, you will see the effect that's going to happen to this word engine. Okay. I have, if I remove and if I put, you see the difference. So double strike through is this one. Okay. Superscript is like that. So subscript is like that. Okay. Shadow is like that. Outline is like that. Emboss is like that. And then we have the engrave and then we have this small cup small cup hidden cup if you want to put all those effects they are there you can choose from them so i'm going to move to the other place where we have the character spacing so if you have been told to increase your character spacing from maybe from the normal to maybe some points or you expand it some points maybe 1.2 okay that's how you do it you come here and just put the figure or you increase using this these buttons that are here so guys the other thing we are going to learn is how to put text effects so you have to select the paragraph you come to format font and then come to text effects so you see you have a blinking background the other one is called Las Vegas Rights. The other one is matching uh, black ants, matching red ants, humor. Okay, you have the sparkle text. So if you put those effects, they're going to occur and, and you'll see the difference. So let me put another effect on the next paragraph format font, text effects, as you can see. And then maybe I put that shimmer. Okay. So if in your exam you have been told to do or to add another text effects, that's how you go about it. If you are told to put a highlight in your document, you have to select and then you come here. Highlight. Okay. You press this drop down list and then you choose the color that you have been told or you have been instructed. If you have been told to put uh, maybe pink. Okay. If I wanted until this place and then I come here and put uh, it green, you see, this is what we call a highlight. We are going to learn how to align our document and we are also going to utilize find and replace feature. The software has a feature that you can uh, utilize to do that work. So it's called find and replace. 
if you want to use it maybe i want to change this word search to look we are going to go to edit okay you see the word find if you want to find that word so you can say find next find next find next find next so you can see all the word that has has the word search in it if i want to use the replace feature i can come and press here you find that word and replace that word with another word that you want so for example i can come to edit and uh, say replace okay so i want to find the word search and replace it with the word look okay and i replace that word so we word okay okay so i want us to start from the beginning so replace yes so replace 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 so replacing that word with the word look so if you come here you won't see any word that has the word search in it in order for us to move to the next part so we have to have uh, four paragraphs i'm just going to copy and paste I want us to align our document in those uh, four ways. The first one is left aligned. So here it is, align left. So if you want to align our document at the center, you come and select and say center. So you can see center is an even on both sides. And if I start typing from there, I start from the center going or budging in both sides. Okay. If you want to align your document in the right direction, you have to select and press the right alignment. Okay, so it's going to align the work the right side, and the left side will be uneven. Okay, so and if I start typing, it will start from the right to the left. Okay, the other way of aligning text is by selecting and then you click justify. So justify is supposed to align your work in such a way both sides are even so you have justified you have light alignment we have the center alignment and we have the left alignment so another way of doing that is selecting and coming to format and then paragraph and then from here you can see here general alignment and from here you can choose either left centered right or justified and if you want to maybe centered you just click that and say okay Okay guys, today we are in lesson 3 and in lesson 3 you are going to learn how to use paragraph indents and spacing, use the offline spell checks and also use uh, word utilities such as auto text and auto correct, check for grammar in the document. We are going to start with the indentation. So we have three types of indentation, we have the full paragraph indentation, we have first line indentation and we have in indentation so in my case i have three paragraphs so we are going to use these paragraphs to elaborate more about the types of indentation so let's start with the full indentation so i'm going to select this paragraph okay if you want to carry out a full indentation you you have to come here on the formatting toolbar and then you press crease indentation okay all decrease indentation you have been told to put an indentation of 1.5 you're going to use this as measurement so it's supposed to be here you're going to increase one two three so 1.5 so if you're supposed to put first line indentation of 1.5 you're going to select in this case you're going to come to format and then you go to paragraph and then under indentation and spacing you come here to indentation and then you come all the way to ratio and then you come and say first line okay so you want to put it to 1.5 so you can type it in or you can use this buttons to increase and this one to decrease and then after you have specified you come and say okay so this is the indentation for 1.5 for the first line only so if you want to carry out hanging indentation you have to select and then you come to format paragraph and then you come to uh, 
uh, here special and then you came to and put a hanging and you insert 1.5 and you say okay so you see the difference so it is indenting the whole paragraph apart from the first line and the other one it is indenting the first line only and the other one is indenting the whole paragraph so this is what you call full indentation this is called first line indentation this is what you call hanging indentation and i'm going to proceed to the next uh, part where you're supposed to learn about uh, offline spell checks okay so let me clear this so i have misspelled this word where i have, no, I have not put o between t and r so you can notice here you have a red wavy line so this is what we are referring to as spell check okay the other instance is when you combine two english words so like i say video device video video device okay i've combined two english words and the other instance is when i say like uh, use a Kiswahili word like uh, puja okay which is, which means come so these are the three instances so why you have misspelled a uh, an english word which is meant to be monitor and when you combine two english words and when you write a word that is not english okay we have this uh, green wavy line it means you have a grammar error where you have maybe you have not followed the right procedure so we all know you're supposed to start with a capital letter if i say m I'm going you're supposed to start with a capital letter here and here we are supposed to put a full stop uh, just immediately after the word and also the comma is supposed to be put immediately after the word if you want to rectify it the first way is to come and right click on it and you choose the word that you meant to put so in our case we have been told you have monitor monitors monitory you have monet but what i wanted is monitor okay so you can select that okay that way but i want to show you another way so in the same case you right click on it and then video device this is what we meant okay but we still have other option like ignore all like the one we shall use in the other word which is which is kuja add to dictionary this means if you put a dictionary the next time you relate the same word you won't have that error again so we have the autocorrect okay uh, but we learn about it later so another way is to come to tools and then here yeah, spelling and grammar but you press f7 on the keyboard so when you click it so it's going to show you all the errors that you have in your document monitor and then some you can say change video device it's supposed to be this one with a space change this one another one we just use the uh, ignore ones and uh, for the grammar you use uh, um okay because i had changed it okay so you can right click on it and say that that right click banana and mangoes so it now our document is grammatically correct and to check down here you will see this check mark which is saying that our document is okay so guys another way to check if your document is grammatically correct is to come to tools use spell checks and it's going to give you this message saying that spelling and grammar check is complete i hope you have understood now i'm going to go to the next part we are going to learn about uh, about using word utilities such as the auto text and autocorrect okay so in our document i'm going to start with autocorrect so autocorrect is where if i type the word there okay i've misspelled it intentionally i've written t e h 
but it's supposed to be T H E there. Okay, so if I press a space bar, it's going to put the right word. If I say add, which is meant to be and, and I put a space, going to change to and. Okay, so this is what you call autocorrect. So for example, uh, if I write the word cocoon, okay, cocoon. So this is not the right spelling. This is the right spelling here. I'm going to come to tools, and then I come to autocorrect options, and here I will press this word cocoon with the right spelling co kun okay it's the word i want to replace every time i type this word cocoon it replaces it with the right spelling which is cocoon okay i will just say okay so if i type this word automatically it's going to bring the right word which is cocoon so if you have any word that you misspell or you have trouble writing it correctly you are supposed to do that before you start typing and then you go to tools autocorrect you put your word here the one you misspell and then you replace with the word that you write it correctly and then you say okay i ask up to insert and then you come to photo text and then you can use this so we want maybe january january okay and then add and then you say okay so now you're in lesson four in lesson four you're going to learn how to move text within a document copy text within a document and apply bullets and numbers to the text so this is the easiest lesson and uh, let's get back to it right now so i have this blank page and uh, i'm just going to copy something from the this one i'm just going to copy this right click copy and then i come to this document and right click and paste okay it's as easy as that so but we have several ways so the first way is that i've used another way is come to edit and then you come and say copy okay and then you can double click to the point where you want to paste you can double click even here and then you come to edit and then click this option of paste so we have two copies we have the first copy the original copy and we have the duplicate if you want to create a new page you can press uh, control enter on your keyboard <clears throat> and you can also copy the work here you can just come to edit paste okay since i had copied before okay the other way of copying is right click okay okay you select and then you right click and then you say copy right click and say paste okay i've pressed ctrl z so that i can undo that and then another way is to select you select that uh, the work you want to copy and on your keyboard you press ctrl and then c okay and then you come down here ctrl v okay it's as easy as that so I hope you have understood. Now you are going to learn how to, to cut. So for you to cut, you have to select. And then you come to edit, cut. So when you cut, it's going to, to shift position. So I want to bring it to the next page. And then you come to edit again, you paste. So it has moved from the first page to the second page. So if you want uh, to cut in other way you have to select and then after you select you right click 
cut, come to the other page, hit click, paste. Okay. Using the keyboard, you have to select, and then control X, and then on the other page, you control V. So I hope you have understood. So control C for copying, control X for cutting, and then if you want to paste, use control V. So the next thing you are going to learn is how to apply bullets and numbering to our page or to our, our list of items. So I'm going to have a list of names, so a list uh, of names. So I'm going to have uh, uh, I'm going to have three three names of boys, three names of girls. So ja, Jane, Jack, Nelly, uh, John, Eunice. And then Peter. So I think that's enough. So I want us to learn how to, to put number in. So you have to select and then you come to you can use this one here, but you come with the default. So this is numbering and this is bullets. Okay. So that's uh, you can see this are it only brings the default uh, numbers one two three but you can use roman one you can use a b c d so i want us to learn that so you can come to format you come to bullets and numbering and then under bullets you can choose from the ones that we have here okay but we have uh, another list you can come to customize and you can choose from fonts okay sorry you can choose from characters we have uh, so many characters so maybe we can use this and say okay and then i say okay you can choose the indent you can also put another you can put indent you can uh, you can adjust this uh, tab space after and indent at Okay, so if you put it, it's going to indent itself to this point here. So you can use it, uh, you can indent manually, like you can come and select these uh, bullets, and then you left click without using the mouse, and then you drag it all the way to there. Okay, or you can come to format, uh, bullets and numbering, you customize, and then yeah, indentation you put it to zero but if you want to increase you see it's, it is increasing even here so you can increase and decrease from there so this one it's uh, increasing the space between uh, the the bullets itself and the actual names okay i think uh, that's okay this one is for the space after the after you press the return key so it's going to press the line okay but i think at 0 0.25 it's okay and then you say okay so that's our work so since we have learned how to copy i'm going to copy and i'm going to paste okay so in the now duplicate copy we are going to learn how to put numbering so if you want to remove it you can just come and press here okay okay you can come to format bullets and numbering and then you can come to numbered and you can choose from here 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 or there to here so you can customize so here you can uh, choose the font you want the number of styling you want where you want to start if i want to start from five you can start from five okay here you want to align your numbering either from left centered right okay also you can uh, align at what position okay the thing that you have done previously okay so in our case you're going to put it to zero 
zero okay and then this one you're going to decrease it to 0 0.5 and also this one 0 0.5 okay then you say okay so you have used romance so you can also change the numbering and you put this one and you say okay so it's as easy as that so we have the next uh, the next uh, type of numbering called a trend numbering so it has several several levels so i'm going to teach you and it's a bit complicated so i want you to follow me very carefully so you first have to put it before you start you come to bullets and numbering and you choose outline numbering and they're going to use this one okay and then you're going to say okay so we begin at number one so you're going to okay we are going to use our country kenya as the as number one and then when you press the return key or enter key on your keyboard it's going to go to number two but we don't want to go to number two we want to go to the next level where you are going to highlight the counting county names and then under county we are going to put town's name so i want to go to the next level so i want you to press tab key on your keyboard so when you press tab it's going to go to the next level you just press it once okay so you write uh, nairobi nairobi okay and then under nairobi we go down to the next level which is down so when i press enter or the return key on your keyboard it's going to take you to b but you don't want b i want roman one okay the next level that is so again you're going to press tab key on your keyboard so when you press tab key it's going to go to the next level and you can see the indentation is going to increase gradually okay so we have kenya you have nairobi you want to specify some towns that are located in nairobi so i put ngara so i want three of them so i have roman two and roman three so ngara I have westlands westlands and then uh, we have a uh, kire ratio or let me put kasarani kasarani okay so i have this three three towns that are located in nairobi and i have used three levels so i have to go to another town i mean another county which is nakuru and uh, right now i have to go back to b so how do you, how, how do we do that so you have to press the enter key on your keyboard so that you can go to roman 4 so if you press backwards i mean or backspace it's going to erase that and you don't want to erase that so you're going to press the return key or enter key on your keyboard and then you press tab key so that you can go forward and then now you press the backspace key to move backwards okay so you press tab you first go forward and then now you go backwards by pressing the backspace so i'm going to type in akuru and then akuru i press tab i press molo njoro and then i can put uh, mili money okay so now i want to go to another country maybe for example tanzania uganda so i'm going to press enter so that i can go to roman 4 and then so that i can move to the to the part where i have uh, number two so that i can put another country i have to press a uh, tab so that i can just move forward and then i press back space that i can move to number two uh, maybe i put in uganda i hope you have understood how to put or how to insert or try numbering <music> guys welcome to lesson five so in lesson five we are going to learn how to insert a clip art picture to our document 
resize the, our picture accordingly, draw the objects like line, etc. Insert a text box, add and edit our that text, create columns and add lines between columns, group a picture, crop in a picture using pub60, drawing auto shapes, and also adding objects which are used to write formulas. Okay, so I give you an example about that when we reach there. So let's begin. So how to insert a picture? Okay, let's do it practically. So if you want to put a picture or to insert a picture, you have to come to insert and then you can come here to picture here and then you choose clip art. But I want you to okay in lesson one I taught you elements of the word document and you can see we don't have a drawing toolbar so if you want to insert it you have to come to the view toolbar and then you come to drawing okay so right now it is there okay that's how you do if you don't see it present so this is it's going to help us to make our work easier so if you want to put clip art you just press here okay rather than coming to insert picture and then clip art okay so when you press clip art it's going to open on my right hand side so i'm just going to type the word of the object or the clip art that i want us to see so if i type in people and then press go it's going to bring the clip art of people let me use this so if you want to put it in our document you have to double click it another way is to drag it okay let me drag this sorry so you drag it to our document so there it is so as you can see moving the picture right now it's a bit tricky it's because you have not uh, extracted it but don't worry about the word i'm going to show you how to do it so if you want to text trap your document or your picture so that you can be able to play with it or to move it also to resize it so you have to press the picture and then you come to here extra and then you come and say in front of text okay so right now it's easy to move your picture around okay now even you can see it has this green button here which means you now you can rotate it okay so another way you you can uh, use to text wrap is to right click on the image and then you come to combat picture and then you come to layout and then say in front of text and then you say okay so that, this is the shortcut where you have to come to this one and if you want to use the wrong way you have to right click and then you format the picture and then you come to layout and then you select in front of text and then you say okay so i want to teach you how to resize your picture accordingly so if you want to resize your picture you have uh, these points here this one this one this one this one okay these points you can see them if you want to adjust the size i recommend you to use the four points that are at the corner this one this one this one and this one because when you use them you see the image is enlarging itself both sides the upward side and the the sideways okay so now you can see the image is bigger okay use these points because if you use uh, this point here going to distort the image okay if you want to change the position okay let me just magnify to 75 percent if you want to to move the position you just have to drag the image and put it where you want okay just that if you want to rotate you have to come to this point where you have the green the green stuff and then uh, you can rotate your image okay so as easy as that okay if you want to change the position you have to bring this side all the way to this now you can see you want to copy 
okay i've just pressed ctrl c ctrl v okay so you bring this point here you have now you can use this point and then you drag it to the other side okay that's how you do it so i hope you have understood about the creep part so you have to come to here okay you have to press this one this icon but you come to insert and press picture creep art that's going to prompt itself in the left hand side and you can type in the word car and then say go okay you can double click it or you can drag the image to the type in area so if you want to delete the image okay you can select it and you can press the delete key on your keyboard you can use this okay you can come to insert and then you come to picture and then you can come and say photo shapes okay so they are going to come here so but let's use this one so insert okay you can say this line okay so let me warn you guys if you see this uh, this this thing coming on your screen you're supposed to press escape before you draw because if you don't remove it it's going to to limit you from moving your images and it's going to disturb you generally so what you're supposed to do is press escape and then now you draw your line okay auto shape okay let's put it's a shape okay put another shape okay so you're just drawing it using the left mouse button okay until you're contented is the time you're going to release the button which is the left mouse button another shape you can put is the shape okay let's put uh, this one so we have these shapes and i'm going to teach you some few things so but if you want to distort the auto shape you're going to press this the orange button and you can see it's changing the shape of the image okay even if you can do this one you have it you can do that okay if you want to delete press the delete key select the image delete key select the image delete key select the image delete key now i want us okay now you press escape on your keyboard then now you draw that now it's just a white background okay and uh, it has a black line which is the border now i want you i want us to learn how to put another color to the border and also the, the line uh, shape to change so if you want to format this shape you have to right click on it go to format auto shape okay and then come to come to colors and lines and then here you can fill in the color okay you can fill in maybe blue and then here you choose the line color to be turquoise and then uh, you can increase the width of the line and then here dashed you put uh, that and then you say okay now you see our shape has changed from the previous one to this okay another way you can achieve that is by coming to format borders and shading and then you come here and uh, say maybe orange and choose another dashed line and then maybe come and choose that one and then say maybe uh, it's going to conflict maybe red and there you have it so you have we had this before now we had this now we have this this is what we call formatting a metal shape so the first way is, right, is to right click there 
object and then you come to format delta shape and then you choose you can choose the no fill okay so now you see uh, you can come to format borders and shading and then you adjust you format it the way it will please you by the way you have been instructed to do so guys uh, the next thing i'm going to teach you is how to add text inside the auto shape so if you want to add text inside here you're going to right click on the image and then choose this option of adding text and then when you click now you can see you can be able to add text is yep okay well you can just type in something like that you can also format put it centered okay you can put it bold you can do basically anything we had discussed in lesson in lesson three okay about formatting so that's it if you want to add the uh, text inside the auto shape you have to hit click then say add text so even if it's like uh, this escape it draw right click on it add text and now you can be able to add text inside there auto shape I hope you have understood now i can go to the next part i want to teach you about grouping images or grouping auto shape so i'm going to draw a house okay i'm going to draw that i can use this okay and then maybe i can put a door a window and a window okay so basically we have how many shapes we have one two three four five but if i want to move this you see it it moves individually and i want if i want to move this house it moves as a one so maybe i can format it a little bit to look different so maybe put that yeah maybe put brown brown okay the windows should be yellow so that it can mean we have light okay so it's just a sketch and the door maybe you know you have kind of crashed but it looks better so if uh, if now i want to group i have to use this this select objects down here i hope you have seen it guys i'm going to teach you two ways but this is the first one so you press it so that it is orange in color you can see it before selection and after selection now you have to select the whole image to fit in the selection you see everything is in the selection now you can use the left mouse button okay so you can see all the components are selected now you can right click on it okay and say grouping and then group now this is one object okay now if you can enlarge you are enlarging the entire object okay if it's to move you are moving the entire object that's why we group so that's the first way of grouping so the next method okay is to select the first one and then you press control key on your keyboard without releasing and then you select the other one by clicking once now you see i've selected all of them then you right click grouping and then group so it's as easy as that now i want to go to the next part where i want us to learn about what that so what that if you want to put it you come to insert what that down here or you come to insert and then picture and then word that okay so if you press this word that or you press that word that it's going to prompt you with this uh, window but well, you're supposed to choose the type of word that you want so you can choose this and you say okay 
and you're going to type your name or you type anything inside your text so i'm going to type in word at word at okay then you say okay now you can see it is okay again you have to text wrap it okay in front of text so that you can be able to move it and also to enhance it okay here you have it so but this is already formatted so you can see it's attractive so i want us to take the one that has not been formatted so that we can learn how to format our data so you can come to file okay sorry you can come to insert picture or that and then we are going to choose this one the first one and then you say okay so let me use um, format let me use this word format <clears throat> and then i can come and choose my font type okay uh, let me use that comic sans ms maybe change that to 32 bold you can also italize but i'm just going to leave it at bold now here it is now what i need to do is to text wrap it in front of text so that i can be able to move it and then you can see it's boring it's uh, black and white okay so the first thing i'm going to do is to add color to it so you can see this uh, okay i'm just going to come here so i'm going to format or that so this is the first way so you can press this this uh, this icon here or you can come to format so you have to select it before you before you do anything else if you want to format you have to select it so you select it and then you come to format so you come to borders and shading and then you come here and you can put uh, this color maybe violet and then the the line should be in the pink and then you okay okay now you can see our our word that now has changed from the previous to this okay now the next thing we are going to do is maybe put some attractive color this is just one color okay i'm going to use this this and then i'm going to press here and then fill effects and then i'm going to choose two colors so let me mix uh, that with that okay and then maybe i use diagonal i hope you're following and then you say okay and then you say okay now our our word that has changed right now it's more attractive now you can decide so that you can see it let me delete this one so that you can remain with this one so the next thing you're going to do is say uh, give it a shape so you're going to come to this so you have these shapes that are here let me use this okay if you ho hover above the shape it's going to give you the name of the shape so let me use curve down okay that's it and then the next thing i can do i'm going to i'm going to okay this one is to make the water to be in the same level okay but right now okay if you have this like that if you want the words to be in the same level you just come and press here so this one is for making it to be horizontal no it was horizontal now it's vertical you can't return it to horizontal you just have to press that one again so uh, let me just come and put the shape that we had so curve down okay now let's proceed to the other part of putting the, the shade or the shadow and uh, 3d so if you want to put the shadow you come here shadow styles and then you can choose from the shadows you see now our word that has a shadow you can uh, play those until you find the one that 
attractive to you okay now the next thing is to put 3d okay see that's it i hope you are enjoying uh the next thing we will learn is how to let me use none and i use this so let me show you how to distort the image so we use this to distort the for that okay you see we increase like that so that's it this one is for rotating okay so guys i hope you have understood about uh, formatting word that put in word that and uh, so that we can proceed to the next lesson so i'm going to delete so the next thing that you're going to learn is how to to use pub 60 okay so to go to pub 60 you have to come to insert and then you come to picture on file and then you have to go to my computer on your computer and then you come to drive c and then you go to program files and then after you go to program files you search for microsoft office that's it cats microsoft office and then you go to clip arts and then pub 60 and then here you have the images okay so i'm going to choose that i don't know even what it is Okay, just go insert. Okay. So that's how you put an image from pub sixty. If now I can go back, I'm going to go direct to pub sixty since I've already reached the path. So let me press that. So if I want to choose this thing for barbecue and say okay. So there it is okay so that's how you get the image from pub 60. so maybe the last trick i can show you so you can do all things that you have learned you have you can come and extract the image okay you see now it's easy to move so maybe the one thing you have not learned maybe it's to adjust the properties so you come to format you right click and then format and then you come to colors no the picture picture and then color you come and choose grayscale so this is how it looks like black and white and then you can come back and then choose automatic automatic is the original picture so the other thing you can do is to put a uh, black and white okay that's it and uh, the last option is to put wash out okay so you have to put it back to automatic format and then put wash out so wash out it looks like that it's a bit dimmed okay so the last trick i'm going to show you so the written is just like we did before so the other thing we can do is maybe i want our image to take the shape of this stuff so or maybe uh, let me use let me use um, let me use this okay so i want our image to take this shape okay so if you want your image to take this shape you're going to right click and then format the auto shape and then come here where you have the fill color and then you come to fill effects and then you come to picture okay and then come and select the picture so if you want to take uh, this picture and say insert say okay and then okay so it's going to take the shape of this image so you have to put the auto shape first and then you for the step of done the thing i think we should do is to put uh, columns I'm going to, to copy this paragraph, copy. 
and then uh, pastes. So if you want to add uh, a column, you have to select, then format, and then column, here it is in the format, and then say column, and then you choose either two, three, you can see, or maybe four, five, six, the one that you wish, but you use four, and then maybe you say a line between, and then you say okay. So you have four columns, okay? So that's how you go about it. So the last thing you're going to learn is how to add an object, okay? So this is the object that we have, and we want to learn how to get something like this. This is a formula. So the first thing you're supposed to do is to come to insert, and then you go to object, okay? And then you choose Microsoft uh, Equation 3.0, there it is, and then you say, okay. So it's going to prompt with this uh, this stuff. So you're going to choose a fraction first. So here it is, you choose a fraction. And then in the first or, or in the numerator, you put the summation, here it is. You choose the first one. And then you put three plus, three plus two, okay? In the denominator, we have this, uh, this symbol, the integral. So you can see it has uh, this uh, this part and this one, then this. So you're going to choose this one because it is similar to the one that we have in the above object. So here you're going to click inside there and say x x plus one. Okay. Down here you have x plus 2, x plus 2, and inside here you have a plus b, okay? So that's how you, you do it. Lesson 6, we are going to learn how to adjust uh, margins in a document. Yes, we're going to learn how to insert and remove hard page breaks. Also, we are going to learn how to insert and remove headers and footers in the document. And also, we are going to learn how to print preview a document. So, I have this blank, uh, I have this blank uh, document. So, you can see our margins are uh, this part. You see, I uh, you type my text. Let me copy, paste, okay. So I want us to see the margin. So the place where the text has not covered is what we call the margins. This one that I'm showing you guys. So these are the margins of our, our document, okay. So you want to know how to change, to change the margins. So you can see this blue part indicates the white right, margin reaches. This one, this one, and this one. So I can uh, adjust my margin. Okay, for example, maybe I had composed this text and uh, only one of these two lines has shifted to the next page and I want it to fit on one page. I can adjust the margins manually so that it can fit the document. So I can come here and do that. Now you can see it's it's going to fit. You do that and you come here and adjust. So it has fit in our page. Okay, so you adjust manually using this point here, the top margin, and this one we used to. Okay, you have to select first, then you come and do that. Okay. And this one you can adjust the right margin, okay, and then the bottom margin, okay. That's how you go about it manually.
to file and then page setup and then you come here at the top of the margin and you choose maybe 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay so you put here at the bottom 0 0.5 left okay you can adjust and you can adjust right then you say okay so you can see here you have 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then here you have 0 0.8 and then here you have one point can't remember but if you come back here you you see 1.25 okay so that's how you adjust so if you want to adjust that 0 0.5 0 0.5 i'm using my keyboard and then you say okay so that's it i hope now you have understood okay so uh, before i erase this text so i want to show you how to print preview so the first way is to come and click here okay so print preview is to help you to to view a document first before you print it you see if it has any errors or if you have cut some information etc okay so i'm going to close the other way is to count file and then print preview it is okay and you close okay so the next thing is to insert a header and a footer so header it, it appears on the top of every page and footer appears on every bottom of every page so if you want to put a header you come and come to view header and footer so when you click it it is the header so i'm going to write something here maybe header no, let me use something else like this date. Today it's on first. First uh, March 20, 2021. So it's on a Monday. So let me use Monday as the, my footer. Okay. When you, when you finish, you press. Okay. You can put it to be centered. Okay entered and then you close so you see on top of every page you have header which is first march and at the bottom you have monday which is the footer okay so that's how you do it guys okay so the next thing you're going to learn is how to put the page number so you have to come to insert page number and then you come and choose where you want it to appear so we want it to be on the right and then you say okay so you have page one page two and page three okay so <clears throat> the next thing i want us to learn is to apply page breaks and the change document orientation so right now we have the portrait so the portrait is the one that has the large okay this uh, large part is vertical and the smaller part is horizontal so this is what you call portrait so if you want to change it to landscape you have to come to file and then page setup and then you choose landscape here and then you say okay so you see we have landscape now so this side is smaller than the top part okay so i want us to learn how to put page breaks so that you can be able to put <clears throat> the next page to be portrait the other one to be landscape and so on and so forth so if i create another page i told you even to put another page you press ctrl key and enter okay that's, that's how you do it okay so if you want to do it again that's how you go about it ctrl enter so i want us to learn how to use page break so page break is the one that is going to help us to put uh, one page to be portrait and the other one to be landscape so you have to come to insert and then break and then say next page okay and then say okay so it's going to create another page here so if i come here file and then i come to page setup landscape see i have 
portrait i have landscape so if i want another landscape i'm just going to press control enter okay if i want to have if i want page 4 to be portrait i have to come to insert break next page it's going to create another page it is then you come to file and then page setup portrait then you say okay so if we want the next page to be portrait you're just going to press ctrl enter and the next one to be landscape insert break next page okay and then you press file then you come all the way to it's set up and then you say landscape so i hope you have understood that's how you go about changing your page orientation and I hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Let's meet in the other lesson. Now we are in lesson 7. So in lesson 7 you are going to learn how to create a table. Yes, so going to learn how to add text to a table. Insert, delete, a row or a column in a table. Merge and split cells in a table. Perform calculations. So we are going to learn how to use auto formats and also to how to format our cells in our table. Next, we're going to, how to learn how to sort uh, data in a table. So, guys, let's start. So, I'm coming in this uh, blank document. So, if you want to insert a table, you have to come to table here on the menu bar, and then you click, and then you come to insert, and then table. Okay when you click it's going to ask you how many number of columns you want and how many number of rows you want so i'm going to select four and uh, two rows so that i can teach you some tricks so i'm then going to say okay so i'm going to have names maths english so so that you can go to the next uh, to the next cell okay i'm just pressing tab okay so and i read kiswahiri okay so we have uh, one two three four columns and one two rows okay so these are the columns these ones and these are the rows these ones that are going across okay so I have eight cells so if you want to know the number of cells that you have you just have to multiply the number of columns with the number of rows so four times two which is eight so we have eight cells so this is one cell another cell a cell another cell a cell another cell okay so adding content is very easy we have to click in the in the cell and i can will use uh, james james got uh, 44 in maths got 55 62 in Kiswahili okay so if you want to come to the this cell here you have to press tab okay write the word mercy she got uh, 50 53 and then here she got 20 so if i want to create another row i just press tab key on your keyboard okay but another way of adding a row you have to select select that cell using your mouse and then you come to table and then you come to insert and then you come and say row above or below but as we want below so the it is now you can place uh, another record and then i say nancy nancy got 77 that way okay so if you want to add another column you have to come here you select where you want to say to put that uh, column then you go there to table insert and then column to the left or to the right if you say to the left it's going to be put in the left and if you want to delete it you have to select 
then you come to table delete column okay if i have a row there i have to come to i have to select it first and then i come to table delete row okay so it's as simple as that so right now you have learned how to add a table you have learned how to add a column you have learned how to add a row and you also have, have learned how to delete a row and a column now i want us to learn how to split and to merge cells so insert table and then i'm going to say four by four but in total you have uh, 16 cells so splitting refers to where you have one cell and you want to make it many okay you convert one cell to many cells and margin is making many cells to be one okay so so that you can you can understand i'm going to show you how to merge first and then how to split so i have selected four cells now i'm going to merge those cells to be one so i'm going to come to table and then over here i'm going to say merge cells when i click merge cells it's going to be one big cell so this is what you call as margin okay so if i want to split this cell to be the way it was i'm going to select and then i can come to table i can come here and say split cells here okay split cells and i'm going to say two by two two by two okay now it's the way it was okay but that does not mean i cannot say and say uh, three three by one okay so you see this is what you call split into us one now it is three cells okay so i hope you have understood so i want us to learn now how to to format uh, these tables so we can use the auto format feature and you can also format it uh, customary as in we custom our design so i'm going to select this table over here then i'm going to come to table then i'm going to come to table auto format and then here they are you can choose to the one that will satisfy your tastes okay so there are several so let me choose that one and then you say okay so you see this is what you call an auto format you are formatting your, your table according to the pre formats that are already in our system so if i want it to be custom i'm going to undo by pressing this or you can press ctrl z on your keyboard so i'm going to select this as the row and then i'm going to go to format and then borders and shading so i want our border to be that way so i can remove this one you can press this or you can just press it here okay so i want it to be like this okay and then i want the shading to be violet and then i say okay the borders can also have another color so let me choose like uh, this one okay that way then the outer one will be different uh, let me choose green green and then i can come and do that 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 and that and then i say okay now you see it is different okay now the first uh, okay at the records i want them to be different too so i'm going to come to format i'm going to come to <coughs> borders and shading and then i can give it a different color maybe that then borders to be that uh, yeah to be different 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 and then this one different okay you see that's how you format so for the sake of time i'm just going to finalize this one i just 
have to come to format borders and shading or let me show you another way another way is to click on it and then you just go and say borders and shading okay or you can just choose the both properties but let's go with borders and shading then you have to choose that that okay and then you choose the shading okay and you say okay and there it is so i hope you have understood so the next thing we are going to learn is how to sort so let us learn how to sort so i'm going to to add a and the record here maybe alex mm -hmm. okay so if you want to sort your records you have to select okay and then come to table and then come all the way to sort okay sort and then you specify if you want it to be in ascending or descending so ascending is where you arrange from small to big and then design is where you arrange from big to small apparently when i say small to big i mean from a to z and the descending one is from z to a okay so let me use just ascending then i'm just going to say okay so you see our records have been sorted from alex or the to nancy so it has been sorted alphabet okay so the next thing you're going to learn is how to add the this records using the formula I'm going to come here then i go to table and then i'm going to say formula uh, formula here it is and then okay the formula is is equal to sum above so it's going to add whatever is uh, on top here and then i'm going to say okay again i click there table formula sum above okay very easy formula above okay so that's it so if you want to delete this table just have to come and press this one and then you come to table and then delete table okay as easy as that so uh, i'm going to teach you how to resize the table so you can resize the table by coming down here and dragging it to the I mean out, outwards or you can resize a cell by selecting that cell and coming outside here and dragging it like that you select that cell then you do like that okay so i think we have uh, covered everything we need to cover so we have learned how to create a table we have learned how to add the uh, text to that table we have done that we have done that calculations using the uh, formula okay so i think you have learned everything so guys let's meet in the other lesson so we are in our last uh, lesson which is lesson eight so in this lesson you are going to learn how to uh, to mail merge so you've been told ms word can quickly and easily allow you to send same standard letter to several recipients this is what is called a uh, mail merge so if i can give you a small example is when you're in school you're you're given a letter okay it's called a newsletter where everyone is given the same letter but different names okay if you're 10 st students each an individual student has his own or her name so that letter is written your name but that letter is the same for everyone so it has different recipients but the same letter that is what we are going to learn that's called what is called mail merge so that letter has uh, two, two main components we have the main document which is the standard letter and we have the data source which contains the list of the recipients so i have already composed that letter and uh, here it is so this is an invitation for an interview it's just for the sake of showing you guys how we merge or how we use mail merge so uh, something we can learn is okay we all know that the 
sender's address should be on the right hand side okay and then the recipients or the person who is being sent the letter the receiver his or her address is supposed to be on the left hand side okay so i'm going to move this uh, this address to the right okay so i know in some okay i know some of you think you're supposed to just come and press right alignment okay but okay yeah so it's supposed to be left aligned okay but it should be on the, on the left hand side so what i'm going to do so i'm just going to move using this left indentation and i'm going to drag it all the way until no that's um, until there okay so this is the sender's address okay let me shorten the name and I'm computer okay there it is and then the sender's address is supposed to come on the on the left hand side okay so this is the letter and uh, the information is conveyed here okay so i'll show you how to create the recipient's list and i um, hope you will follow so if you want to mail merge what you will do you have to come to tools and then you go to letters and mailing and then go to mail merge so it's going to come here so we have a letter already say it is okay we have the standard letter already so you're going to go to the starting document and then use the current document since you already have it and then you select uh, the recipient so we don't have an existing list so you have to type a new list so if you had an existing list you are just going to press browse but since we don't have you have to type a new list so you come here and create okay hope you are following so you come and create uh, you get a list and it's going to prompt you to this window and then you have to customize it so that it can uh, fit the the fields that you only need okay so i'm going to delete i'm going to delete that I just want us to have the first name, last name, and the town. So, if you want uh, to rename, you just come here, press that, you type in time, then you say OK, and then OK. So, I just want us to have uh, the people who are, we are going to invite should be around uh, five. So, Ezekiel, Nongesa, and then from Molo and then new entry okay so right now you're going to have the second person so unis kirui town albagon then new entry jack Mwai, Town, Nakuru, and then new entry, and then I'm going to have a faith, faith, uh, faith, Jepto, Town, Njoro, okay, the last one, new entry, uh, we are going to have Helen, Komboka. Okay, she is also from Molo. So maybe you have uh, typed uh, a list and then you have found that you don't need someone like this number five. You just have to come here and say delete. Okay, so you will delete that record. So you will be only having four of them. Okay, so maybe you have typed maybe a list of 100 people and maybe you want to find a certain record so maybe you can edit or you can delete it you have to press here and say find entry okay so if you are finished uh, with the list you just, just have to press this close and when you press it it's going to ask you to save so you're just going to save it as list 
lists uh, list of names i'm just going to put it like that and then like say save so our list has four people so we have uh, Ezekiel, Eunice, Jack and Faith and you're going to say okay so right now we have an existing list so you're going to move to the next part where you have to write your letter so in our letter okay the greeting line and the address block is supposed to come here you see here so i'm just going to say address block i'm just going to say okay and then i press the return key or enter key on your keyboard so that you can have the greeting line and then you say here and you can choose if you want to say dear sir or mother, madam or to whom it may concern okay let me just say dear sir or madam and then i say okay so that's the address block this is the greeting line address block for the receiver and then the greeting line to address the receiver and then i'm going to say complete the merge and then you can see ezekiel nyongesa dear ezekiel nyongesa blah 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 so i'm going to press this editing each individual letter so that you can you can see all the records so we have ezekiel we have eunice we have jack and we have five so guys i hope you have understood and uh, that's all about mail merge okay and that marks the end of our lesson and also the end of uh, microsoft word i hope you have enjoyed the lesson see you in the next uh, package which is microsoft excel